my channel. If you are new, my name is Mary and I'm so happy to have you here for today's Self Care Sunday, the day of the week that we come together for a little self care, skin care, and soul care to talk about love, dating, and the law of assumption. Self Care Sunday is the one day a week that I schedule this video as a live premiere here on YouTube. And by scheduling it as a live premiere, YouTube gives us a live chat option as the video premieres. So I am here with you live and in person every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time just to hang out and chat, do a little Q&A, get updates from you guys, talk about the subject of the video, whatever. It's a lot of fun as the video premieres. So it's always a really great time. We've been getting some really big crowds for it, having some really good conversation. So be sure to tune in for the next one. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever I premiere a new Self Care Sunday. Since this is Self Care Sunday, I will be doing some skincare during this video. And the product that I am using today is the Gently Exfoliating Fruit Enzyme Mask. If you guys ever want me to link products, let me know. I know that there's a lot of interest in the stuff that I use. This is by Reviva Labs and it is cruelty free, vegan, made in the US, not tested on animals, all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying this using my camera screen as a mirror. And we're gonna talk about how I manifested commitment from my SP. So for those who are new to the channel, my SP was someone that I had this like hot and cold, on again, off again relationship with. There were times where he was just really uncertain, didn't want the same things as me. Let me know if this is ringing a bell for you if you're in a similar situation. I was to the point where I was in my 30s and wanted marriage and children and, you know, my picket fence and my happily ever after. And he wasn't sure if he wanted those things. Now, knowing what I know now about the law of assumption, I know that I was ultimately the one that was manifesting all of that uncertainty in him. But at the time, I didn't know that. At the time, I was like, God, what's with this guy? He's so hot and cold. He's so unsure. He's here. He's gone. He's this. He's that. And not only was I thinking these things, I was also, you know, confiding in girlfriends and talking about this stuff, which again, I know now was just affirming for that, was just validating the version of him that was appearing in my 3D. So one of the first things that I did to manifest commitment with my SP was I had to start ignoring the parts of him that were not in alignment with the end state I was manifesting. So if I'm manifesting marriage and he's coming to me and saying, you know, I'm just really not sure about the relationship. I don't think we're on the same page. I don't think I'm ready for the things you're ready for, blah, 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 whatever he was saying. As he's saying these things, I have to not react. I have to put my big girl pants on and just go, okay, I hear you. Okay. I mean, ultimately I want to be a wife someday, but okay. You know, if that's not what you're looking for right now, I can't make you. I don't want to make you. That's fine. And then I had to keep my stupid little mouth shut and not run to my girlfriends crying about it. Because again, that is just affirming more of that. Grab my little energy drink and settle in because we're going to be here for a minute. So I really, really had to work to keep myself under control. And was I perfect? No. There are times I made mistakes. There are times I did go down a spiral and call up a girlfriend and cry my eyes out because it hurt so bad. But I really had to persist and keep that strong mental diet and remind myself that the only way I was going to get my desired end state of commitment in marriage was if I stopped validating the current version of him, that version of him that I did not want to exist anymore, that version of him that was unsure about me, that didn't want to settle down, him and all his homeboys are going out on the weekend. That's not the version that I wanted him to be. And that's not the version that he was his happiest at. We were both miserable during the on again, off again, hot and cold, whatever. Because ultimately me and this man love the hell out of each other, like seriously, love the hell out of each other. He is my best friend, I am his best friend. We have so much fun together, we're like little kids. But my own self-concept, my own uncertainty about myself caused him to react in this way. So we were both just miserable. Like even when we got back together and got our shit together, I had his friends, his friends coming up to me going, I'm so glad you guys are back together. He really didn't seem happy without you. Because he wasn't, <laughs> because, because he didn't want to hot and cold 
come and go. He didn't want that. He had to because that is the energy that I was putting out because my self-concept was so bad. So the second thing that I did to get this man to commit was I worked on my self-concept. I'm not gonna go on and on and on for a long time about self-concept in this video. I've released a lot of other videos where I do a much, much deeper dive into self-concept. I may even put together like a self-concept playlist on this channel so it's easy for you guys to watch them all back to back. But essentially, I really had to stop putting him on the pedestal and focusing on him and just focus on myself for a while. Because whenever you're manifesting commitment from a specific person, you aren't manifesting change in that person. You're manifesting change in yourself, which they will then later on have to reflect back to you. So what I had been doing for manifesting my SP was I was just constantly affirming for him. I was just constantly affirming for him. He's so in love with me. He's so obsessed with me. He can't wait to marry me. He's this, he's that, blah, blah, blah. And I wasn't addressing the parts of me that needed help. I wasn't saying, I deserve my happily ever after. I deserve to have the life that I want. I'm worthy of receiving the love that I give. I wasn't saying those things to myself. I wasn't convincing myself and my subconscious mind of my own worthiness. On the outside, you guys, I am cocky as hell. But on the inside, I was this broken down little girl who had been through hell in her life and was not sure that I deserved to have the things that I was manifesting. So whenever you see hot and cold behavior from an SP, more times than not, they're coming towards you because you are affirming the right things. He's so in love with me, he wants to be around me, I'm all he ever thinks about, etc. They're coming towards you because you're affirming those things, but then the energy of your own shitty self-concept repels them and they go back away and then they come forward because you're affirming for it and then they have to go back away because your energy won't allow them to be near you like they want to be. So it's torture for both of you guys because they're getting drawn to and pushed from over and over again, this person that they love so much and you're getting your heart broken over and over again by the constant rejection of this person that you love so much. So it's miserable for both of you guys. And that is why self-concept is so important. So by the time I was able to manifest commitment, like back together, boyfriend and girlfriend, and then engaged and then married. So the, the morning of October 1st of 2020, I was a single lady. By that evening, my SP and I were back together. Six months later, we were engaged. And then three months after he proposed, we were married. So I went from being single to married in nine months. It moved really, really quickly when you think about how uncertain he was. I and mean, he was so uncertain for so long. And then from the day we got back together until the day we got married was nine months. And all of the months leading up to that series of events, I really was just like, man, I've got to work on myself. Like if he comes back, he comes back. I knew he was going to come back because I was manifesting, but I've got to work on myself. Not And not to solicit a reaction from him. It wasn't let me work on myself so I can get my ex back. It was let me work on myself because I deserve it. Because I deserve to know in every cell of my being that I deserve love. True love. Not wishy-washy surface stuff. Not we go to brunch on Sundays and then don't talk for forever. True freaking love messy love, dirty love, okay? I have a cold and I can't breathe out of my nose and I am snoring like a freight train, but he still loves me love. That kind of love is what I deserved and I needed to convince myself of that because I didn't believe that. I believed that I needed to be perfect. We had been dating off and on for three years at that point. And I still thought I needed to be perfect around him because that's what I thought he had to have. I was scared to, to not be. I said I wasn't gonna go down a self-concept rabbit hole and now here I am. So let me pull myself back out. But self-concept is really, really important and that is one of the things that I did to manifest commitment for my SP. And then the third thing that I did to manifest commitment for my SP was I created space for him. I have a whole other video I released recently. I will link it here where I talk about how to physically create space within your environment for SP to fill, but I also created this energetic space where in the past I had been in a state of pursuit, you know, where I would reach out to him and I would I would be the one trying to hang out and I would be the one asking for us to go to the movies together and he would do it, you know, but kind of begrudgingly, right? And I needed to create space for him to miss me and space for him to pursue me because ultimately when they come back or come into your life, they need to believe that this is their idea. 
And it is in a sense, but like they need to believe that it's their idea. You feel me? So I had to create space for that, for him to enter. So as extreme as this probably sounds to many of you, I actually disabled my social media. I had created this habit where I was posting all the time because I wanted him to notice me. I was posting five, six, seven, eight times a day looking cute, where I'm going, what I'm doing, who I'm with, all of these things because I wanted him to notice me. And I wanted any potential little third parties to see how cute. I'm going to be honest. I was being petty as shit. I was posting all this petty stuff. Like, let them, like, let them all see this. I don't care. Look, I'm a baddie, booty, uh, whatever. I was doing all of this stuff instead of just focusing on myself because a woman or a person who is confident, who is truly confident, doesn't need to do all of that. They know that they're going to get attention. They know they're going to walk in a room and turn every head. They know that they can have any man or woman that they want regardless of the circumstances. A truly confident person knows that. The kind of person who's posting on social media 24-7 is someone who's insecure. And that is exactly who I was. So a lot of this is very much like fake it till you make it mentality. Where even if you are not feeling confident, you have to project that confidence fake it till you make it, until it becomes a reality. You're like placeboing yourself into confidence. And that is exactly what I had to do. And it's exactly what I did. So for a while, I completely disabled my social media because I'm like, I'm not using this as a healthy tool right now. I am using this to try to get the attention of someone who's currently not giving me the type of attention that I want. I'm not posting these things because it's fun or because I want to. I'm posting these things because I feel like I have to so that he'll see me, so that maybe he'll get jealous, so that maybe he'll get curious. And that is not a healthy place to be in. So I'm not telling you to disable your social media altogether or delete it. I'm not telling you to do that. You don't have to go to that extreme that I did. However, make sure that you have space in your life for them to fill. Make sure that, you know, you're not posting every second of every day on social media. They need to be curious about you so they can reach out to you and ask you what you did today or what you did this weekend. You need to create that physical space for them in your environment so that when they do start coming over and spending the night, you know, there's room for their toothbrush on the counter. It's not covered in freaking Jeffree Star cosmetics. I don't know, you know what I mean? Like there's room for this person in your life. So these are just three of the many things that I did to manifest commitment for my SP. I've done so many SP videos on this channel, but I feel like it's a really important topic because SP is how so many of us end up discovering the law of attraction or law of assumption. So if you guys have any more specific SP topics you're wanting me to cover in future videos or any other topics you'd like for me to cover, be sure to drop them in the comments below. You guys know I am always happy to do requests from the subscriber community here. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button and drop a comment below letting me know that you liked today's topic. So I know I'm doing a good job and can continue making videos for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye friends.